I'm going to look at Psalm 25, and this is going to be titled, Still in the Book or Back in Your Sin. A lot of people, they, they're they off and on in their Christian life. Sometimes they're in the book, and then you look at them, a week later they're back in their sin. They lack that consistency. In Psalm 25, David is asking the Lord to teach him his paths. Never think that you know something. You know nothing. Don't think that you know anything about the Bible when you know nothing. You need to approach God like Solomon did. He said in 1 Kings 3 and verse 7, I know not how to go out or to come in. And 1 Corinthians 8, 2 says, And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. The more I'm in the book, the less I believe that I know about the book. If you're not in the book and you're back in your sin, then you can expect, number one, your enemies to triumph over you. Psalm 25, 1, a psalm of David. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Are you lifting up your soul to your own wants and desires or to the Lord? To entertainment or to the Lord? I want to lift up my soul to the Lord. Uh, these studies I do aren't much, but my heart, soul, and time go into them. I'm an unprofitable servant at best. I need to do more, but I want my soul to be lifted up to the Lord. David says in Psalm 25, 2, O oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. If you're back in your sin and out of the book, you can expect your enemies to triumph over you. Now look all the way down at verse 19. He says, Consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. You're going to have some enemies, and they're going to triumph over you if you don't stay in this book and in prayer. In 1 John 3.13, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. John 15.19, If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. You're going to have many haters. You're going to have many enemies. And if you're out of the book, then you can expect the enemy to triumph over you. Say goodbye to a victorious Christian life and say hello to wandering in the wilderness for 40 plus years. You're going to go through this life and you're going to come out with nothing at the judgment seat of Christ because you're too lazy and just too just too defeated to even try. You might you might break the children of Israel's record and wander 40 more than 40 years, maybe 50, 60 years of your Christian life. Your enemy can be depression. Your pet sin, a literal person or any giant in your life. Don't expect to triumph over your enemies in your everyday life when you won't even crack the book open. I spend so much time trying to get people into the scriptures because the biggest sin Christians have today isn't church attendance. It isn't stealing. It isn't murder. It isn't adultery. It's neglecting the book, and they're destroyed for lack of knowledge. Second Peter 3.18 says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. You're going to grow in grace and then in the knowledge of, the Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ when you read about him. And before Peter mentions this verse about growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he mentions Paul's epistles and the scriptures, putting those two things right in the context of growing in 2 Peter 3, 16 and 17. So do you want to grow? Do you want to be a, a, a good soldier for the Lord? Or do you want to be a spiritual Zacchaeus? Just staying the same size and ever growing? Or do you want to be a David on steroids? Or Elijah with that giant syndrome? You just keep on growing. If you're out of the book and back in your sin, then you can expect the enemy to cross the finish line before you. And number two, you can also expect to be ashamed. In Psalm 25, 2 and 3, it says, Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. Let not mine enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. Let them be ashamed which transgress without cause. You see, sometimes you can sin and you didn't really mean to. You meant to. We all mean to, but you didn't really mean to, if you know what I mean. Other times you are deliberately meaning to go against God on purpose and in straight defiance. You're transgressing you're transgressing without cause. 
Christians every day are getting up and God isn't the first thing on their mind. The scriptures are not the first thing on their mind. They go through the whole day and sin every other second. They do things that they know are wrong. They're taking sin so lightly and they will be ashamed one day, whether it's here or over there. Maybe their conscience has got so blind to it that they aren't as ashamed as they used to be, but shame is coming. In Romans 6.21, it says, What fruit had ye in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Talking about your sins. You ought to be ashamed of them. Psalm 25.20, Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. As the Lord, ask the Lord to keep you from getting off into sin and being ashamed. You need to get back in the book. And he can give you ways to escape when temptation arises or lead you down a different path so that you don't get tempted. If you put your trust in the Lord, then you won't be ashamed. He's always going to come through with what he said he would do. Have you ever had a date or an outing plan with someone and you waited for them for like two hours but they never showed up? You were ashamed that you even waited. But trust in the Lord and you won't be ashamed because he's going to come through. If you're out of the scriptures and back in your sin, you can expect that shame feeling to come eventually. It might not be right now, but it will come. Then, if you're out of the scriptures and back in your sin, you're on a scary path. In Psalm 25, 4 and 5, David says, Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. God isn't going to show you his ways when you haven't drove down his path in years. I mean, I see the Bible like a journey. When I approach the Bible, I'm like one of these people that is on a permanent vacation. And I'm exploring the world of the Bible, riding on a cherub like the Lord is in Psalm 18.10. And on this journey, the Lord is showing me his ways. And I'm going down back roads in the scriptures just to see what they lead to. Just for no reason. You ever done that in real life? Just drove down a back road, see where it takes you to? That's what I do in the scriptures. I'm just, I'm on a journey. And I always find that these back roads just lead back to this other place that I'm familiar with because the Bible is connected. The Lord can't show you the world of the scriptures if you're not in the scriptures. You made a stop at the movies and you never got back out. Your headphones are so loud that you can't hear God speaking. I think you're so caught up in your own sorrow that you forgot that life is about others and not about yourself all the time. In Psalm 25, 5, David said, Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. You see, the Lord can't lead you in truth when you think you know more than he does. What we have in the King James Bible is absolute truth. It is the final authority. And when everything around me is a lie... I can rely on the scriptures to be like a glorified GPS system that never gets me lost. It will lead me in truth and teach me where things are. So lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. When you open the Bible, you need to pray, God, teach me. In John sixteen thirteen, it says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. God will guide you. Maybe you won't get an answer at that very moment, but David said, On thee do I wait all the day. I've still got some scripture questions that I'm waiting on the answer. But did you know that the creator of the universe is in a 24-7 question and answer session? And he can take infinite questions at once, and you can't even stump him with the question. But if you're still in sin and out of the book, then you're walking down a scary path that is just a dead end. You're not going any further and when you get to the dead end, when you get to the very end of that dead end, there is a treadmill down there, and you're just going to walk in place in front of a huge, beautiful picture of a fake paradise, and you're seeing something that looks good, and you want to get to it, but you're too lazy to get after it, and what you want isn't even real to you anymore. It's just a picture to you. But now, skip down a few verses to verse 10. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, and to such as keep his covenant and his testimonies. Have you ever been down a road that you didn't trust? Have you ever heard of teenagers removing stop signs and cars crashing into each other because of it? Have you ever heard of a 
a baby laying on the side of the street, and when someone comes to help the baby, they kill the person that got out to help the baby, and they rob him. The roads of this world are deceitful. There are nails that mess up your tires. There is roadkill. But on the Lord's path, you find mercy and truth. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth. His road is the Romans' road to salvation. His road is the revelation road to redemption. The Philippians' path to righteousness. But when you're out in sin and never in touch with the book, this is the next point, you forget the character of God. David said in Psalm 25, 6, Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have ever been of old. You see, the God of scriptures, his character is that he is a God of mercy. And his mercy is always refreshing. It refreshes itself. It never runs out. There is never a shortage. And in Lamentations 3, 22 through 23, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. David says to the Lord, Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies. And that is what you pray when you sin big time. I say, God, I know I messed up, and I deserve for you to smack the, the living far out of me. And I'm sorry. Please don't kill me. Don't do what I deserve. When you're out of the book and out of prayer, you will begin to forget a relationship with God that works that way. You will forget the character of God. And the devil will begin to mold in your mind a completely different God, an imposter, that will only keep you out of the scriptures even longer. Do you know what happens when you stray so far away from fellowship and the scriptures? You begin to create a God in your mind that plays hard to get. A God that says, I'm not talking to you today because you did that certain sin. You start imagining a God that says, you need to wait about a month before you talk to me again. It's too soon. You just committed that abominable act yesterday. Do you really think I want to talk to you? That's the kind of God you start to create in your mind. You forget about the character of God that has mercies that are new every morning. That's what happens when you get back into your sin and out of the scriptures. You'll forget that your sins are forgiven and that the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses you from all sin. David says in Psalm 25, 7, Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. The only way you can get God to not remember your sins is to get them washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're saved, you've done that. Somehow the Lord has it fixed to where when you stray from God, you forget this fact and you lose assurance. And you forget that your sins are paid for. And you begin to lose assurance of salvation. You start saying to yourself, there is no way I'm saved since I've committed this sin or this act. You might even start thinking that God is mean, evil, unfair, that he hates you, wants you to be miserable. And you say, why has God done this? Why is God doing this? You start to forget the real character of God. You start to question the character of God. When you leave the book, you forget the character of God. But David says in verse 8, Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. So you're going to forget the character of God if you don't get back in the book. And when you stray from the book, you become unteachable. In Psalm 25, 8 and 9, it says, Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. So how is the Lord going to teach you when you won't show up for class? How is the Lord going to teach you when you never bring the textbook? The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek are humble. God can show them what to do and they'll do it. They know God is right, so they just do it without complaint or being easily irritated. They just do it. God will guide the meek. He will do it even if he uses a man to do it. Just like he used Philip to guide the, the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8. When I had trouble learning something in the Bible, the Lord always seems to put a good man in my path to show me the meaning. In Nehemiah 8.8 8, it says, So they read in the book and the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. That's what I'm trying to do for you in this study. Make you understand. But when you're out of the book and back in your sin, you can't learn anything because you won't even show up for class. They're wa waking up every morning and playing hooky. They're babes in Christ who think they need senior skip day every day. 
I mean, they're always on summer break all year round. They never come to class. They never come to school. It's time for you to get your school supplies and come back to learn the way of righteousness again. So get your wide margin King James Bible. Get you some micron pens, a good concordance, some sharpie highlighters, some white out, and just do your best. And be consistent. Come to class every day. Don't just come one day and then not come the next day. Psalm 2510, All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, unto such as keep his covenant and testimonies. But if you're out of the book, then you don't know or you'll forget his covenant and testimonies. Did you know that if you aren't constantly learning, then you will constantly be getting dumber? Because you're always forgetting things that you used to know. And if you haven't learned anything to replace what you're forgetting, then you're getting dumber. And if you're not refreshing what you already know, then it will be so far in the back of your mind that you won't even be able to recall it anymore. So on the path of mercy and truth, this world is showing you no mercy. Just like those old t-shirts they used to wear. They say no mercy. This world is no mercy. This world is half-truths, complete lies, and fake news. But God is the opposite of that stuff. In Psalm 25, 11, it says, For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon mine iniquity, for it is great. David says his iniquity is great. The only way to get your sin, to get your iniquity pardoned, is to come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are and believe the gospel. Your sin is great. And that brings me to the next point. When you're out of the book and back in your sin, sin starts to look less like sin. And you're not going to see your sin as great. David said, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Never downplay your sin. David didn't downplay his sin. The world betrays sin as not that big of a deal, and they glamorize sin. Walking through the mall once with my wife, we noticed that even the makeup had wicked names on it. The names of the makeup were sexually explicit names. And I'm sure this is awkward when a mom is shopping with her daughter or something, they go through there at the makeup aisle. Just the stuff you see just in the store, it's it's wicked now. It glamorizes sin. I mean, that's that's the good illustration of sin being glamorized is makeup with sinful names. I've been... I've always been inter interested in crime stuff, and I've always found it interesting how they would find fingerprints and clues to catch the bad guy, but I've never been a fan of the criminal. Now, the crime stuff has become so popular that people wear the serial killer on their t-shirts. It just beats all I've ever seen. I mean, I'm interested in crime stuff, but I'm not a fan of the criminal. The world makes sin look good, and I went to a crime museum once, and it was pretty interesting. But they were selling shirts with the serial killers on them, smiling, like Ted Bundy was on the t-shirt. And I know the people who buy the shirt obviously don't agree with what the serial killer does, and I don't, I don't think they're bad people for wearing it. I don't even think that they realize what they're doing when they wear it. It's just that kind of t-shirt kind of puts that guy in a, in a light that he shouldn't be in. I don't think he should have his own t-shirt. Because, I mean, he killed tons of people. But the the world, it makes sin seem not that bad. I mean, when you wear a t-shirt with Jeffrey Dahmer on it, smiling, it's just kind of like, you know, he killed people and ate them. I don't think that that's, that makes it look like he's kind of not that bad. He's a really bad guy. The world makes light of sin, and they make it look pretty, but the Bible does it opposite. It makes your sin look great. And not like Tony the Tiger great and Frosted Flakes great, but actually great as in big, as in all sin is big sin. But next, if you're out of sin, if you're in sin and out of the book, you're going to lose fear. In Psalm twenty five twelve, it says, "What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose." Psalm one eleven ten, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When you have been away from preaching, away from dealing with burdens, away from reading the Bible. You're going to lose some fear of the Lord. Hearing preaching from the Bible keeps you on the good and narrow way. It reminds you that you're going to reap what you sow, and there are consequences for sin. Psalm twenty-five, twelve: What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. If you fear God, then you become teachable. If you don't fear God, then you think you know it all. You know, when I start a new job, I'm always a little bit nervous. 
and I don't think that I just know everything when I just started the job. So I'm like, I'm wanting to uh, listen to my trainer because I don't want to mess up. I'm fearful of messing up. So I'll listen better because I don't want to mess up. When you're away from God and you're not even thinking about the Bible, you're obviously not worried about messing up and you become unteachable. It says in Psalm 25, 13, his soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. Next, you miss out on the deeper things of God. When you're back in sin and out of the book, you miss out on the deeper things of God. His soul shall dwell at ease and his seed shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. When your eyes are ever toward the Lord, he will show you his secrets. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. That's the deeper things of God. In Daniel 2.22, he revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. Daniel 2.47, it says that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Seest thou couldst reveal this secret. I don't want to go through my Christian life just knowing the basics of the Bible. I want to know the deep and secret things. I'm constantly trying to learn something about the scriptures that I didn't know before. And this takes a constant study, a constant reading, a constant memorizing and pondering on the scriptures. And many men will only focus on the practical and devotional aspects of the Bible. If that was all God wanted us to do, then why is there an Ezekiel? Why is there a Daniel? Why is there an Isaiah? It's almost like some men look down on you for being interested in the book of Ezekiel because they just they hate the deep and secret things. I want to know everything about the Bible that it's possible for me to know in this life. I've got a long way to go, so that's why I took off the starting line about 10 years ago and I've been going strong ever since because I just want to know more. I know I, and I know that I will finish my course before I could ever make it to a finish line of the scriptures. I mean, I'm never going to know it all. And I don't see how you can coast through life and never to desire to want to know more, to know the deep things of God, the deep and secret things. The Bible talks about how his, he's unsearchable. His ways are past finding out. And I just want to know all that I can. But next, when trouble comes, you'll feel like you can't go to God. When, you, when you're out in sin and out of the book, you're going to feel like when trouble comes, you can't go to God. In Psalm 25, 15, David said, Mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. If you're in the book and in fellowship, then when you get between a rock and a hard place, you'll have confidence that he can get you out. If you're out of fellowship, then you will live in a constant state of worry and fear of the things of this world because you aren't keeping confidence in the Lord to pluck your feet out of the net. In Isaiah 26, 3, it says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. If your mind is on binge-watching Netflix, playing Fortnite, golfing, hunting, fishing, and soap operas, then don't expect to have that peace. In Psalm 25, 16, and 17, it says, Turn thee unto me, and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart are enlarged. O oh, bring thou me out of thy distresses. When you're burdened, distressed, and afflicted, the things of this world will only bring a false happiness that lasts until you get tired of it. Psalm twenty five eighteen Look upon mine affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. If you've been out of the book and out of fellowship, then all you have to do is seek God, draw not to God, and he will draw not to you. In 1 John 1, 7 through 9, it says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. All you got to do to get back in fellowship is just come to God in prayer and tell him you want to get back in fellowship. Getting back in fellowship is as easy as it was to get saved. When you got saved, you called on the Lord. When you get back in fellowship, you say, Hey, Lord, I'm sorry, and I want to be back in fellowship. God wants to talk to you more than you want to talk to Him. He's not going to turn you away. Psalm twenty-five, nineteen: Consider mine enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. You're going to have thorns in your flesh that are actual people. 
and you're going to be wanting the Lord's help, just like Israel did in the book of Judges. But if you're constantly out of the book and out of the prayer closet, you will feel like you can't say what David says in Psalm 25, 20 through 22, where he says, Oh, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in thee. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait on thee. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. You're going to feel like you can't say stuff like that. And when David says, Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles, that's what they're going to be saying in the tribulation. You see, these Psalms have tribulation application. When those Jews are going through the tribulation time period, they're going to be saying, Redeem, O Israel, O God, out of all his troubles, the time of Jacob's trouble. But today, you're going through just your regular troubles every day, and you're going to need God to help you with those troubles. But if you're out in sin and not in the book, you're going to forget the character of God. You're going to think God doesn't want to talk to you. You're going to think that God doesn't want to help you with your troubles. That's the stuff that God tells, that the devil tells you. You see, when you're out in sin, you're listening to the devil. You've, your familiar voice is the devil, not God. And that's who you're listening to. And the devil's going to feed your mind with stuff like God doesn't want to talk to you. God doesn't want you to talk to him for another few months after you've done all this wicked stuff. And then in, sometime in between that, in that two months, you end up doing the same sin again. So then you've got to wait another two months. It's just crazy stuff that the devil tells you. God wants you to talk to him right now. So come to him in prayer and pray to him right now and get back in fellowship.